the vast majority of Forex traders use support and resistance lines. The vast majority of Forex traders lose money. Are we really going to sit here and act like there's no connection at all? Well, you knew it was coming, and it's about time we talked about it. And I just, I just want to say this because I know there are so many people that will be watching this video that use and are fans of support and resistance lines. Um, so just know that it is totally fine, it is totally okay to make a video that shows how awesome support and resistance lines are. It is also totally okay to make a video that says why you don't think support and resistance lines are that great at all. And that's what this video is. But people get really, really sensitive over little pixels and pulses of light on a screen that have no feelings, no families. But how dare I be the one guy to, to speak negatively on them? You know, it's almost like there's this unwritten rule that you can only say positive things about certain tools in technical trading. And therein lies the problem. So let's talk about this. Now, first, understand traders uh, a lot of you who are watching this video right now are my subscribers uh, my blog readers my podcast listeners um, this I make a lot of videos that are mainly just for you I wouldn't say this is one of them this is a video that's gonna be more for new viewers a lot of you already know to avoid support and resistance lines um, but I have to be respectful to some of the new viewers coming in too and certain videos are gonna be more geared towards them um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't watch this. There's always things to learn, especially when I make these dirty dozen videos. Um, so it's true. I don't like support and resistance. Um, it was in the dirty dozen video, um, which was one of the most popular videos I've done. And which I went over 12 different Forex tools that most people out there use or use some combination of. And a little snippet on them of why I don't think they're very good. And then I later went on to say that I'm going to do an individual video on each one of those tools. And so we have arrived at support and resistance. And I also have a video called Big Banks, if you have not seen it. Um, I will link it down below in the description. Um, as of right now, it has over a half a million views. It has completely changed the way a lot of people think about Forex. And what I talked about in that video is going to play a very big part in what I talk about today. So if you haven't seen it, you just actually want to go see it right now. I'm going to put a little box up in the corner right now. And you can click that and come back here if you want. It wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, but I do know that a lot of you have already seen that video. So let's get right into this one. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you why I don't use support and resistance lines and why I prefer my method better. There are clear differences between using things like support and resistance, as popular as they are, and the way we do things. And I want to really point those differences out, especially to people finding this channel for the first time, especially to newer traders, and especially for traders who have been using support and resistance lines for you know, maybe a year or two or even less. Um, but I will also attempt, at least, to make peace with the diehard support and resistance crowd out there. Um, because I know a lot of you are watching this video right now. A lot of you are just grinding your teeth, just waiting for me to say something you disagree with. Um, fear not, at the end, um, I have a solution that I think will work for all of us. But the fact still remains that most technical traders do use support and resistance in some capacity, and most of them lose money. This is a problem. And I think there are real reasons behind this, and whether you use them or like them or you don't, we need to at least dive into what these problems might be. Um, so. First off, understand, I even said this in the Dirty Dozen video, support and resistance lines are not awful. All right, I don't just completely hate on them. Trend lines are terrible. There, there are no, no redeeming factors to trend lines at all. Most people don't even draw them the right way or don't draw them the same as everybody else does. And this leads to wild inconsistencies uh, and the fact that you better hope diagonal support and resistance is actually a thing, um, which I really doubt it is. I absolutely did crap on trend lines in the video I made for that. Uh, psychological price levels uh, are not very good either. Um, they're these ma imaginary levels where people think that everybody's just going to react to, and then sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but we have no idea which one that's going to be, which levels those are going to be at, and why we should even care. 
Um, so that's I like support and resistance a lot more than I do these implied make believe levels. And then Fibonacci, <laughs> you guys know how I feel about Fibonacci. And any chance I get to kind of shoehorn this in, I'm going to. Now, and now look, there are there are Fibonacci traders out there who do really well with it, um, but they are very few and far between. The odds. Uh, look, I make videos for the majority of traders, not for the, the tiny little group of Fibonacci hardcore nerds that are going to figure out a way to use this thing. Now, the odds of most people ever getting to where you are with Fibonacci is extremely small. There are reasons why this is, and nobody's going to want to take those odds. And so when I did the Fibonacci video, that was mainly the points I was trying to highlight there as well. But Support and resistance is just something I flat out don't advise people to use. I can't say anything really terrible about them, but I honestly do think if you can just get these out of your trading altogether, you're going to be better off. And there are two big reasons why this is. And so we're going to cover both of those in a minute. But first off, just understand too, um, a lot of times I leave details out be for the sake of time because I feel like they're obvious, but the nitpickers always want to jump in. So just so you know, here at No Nonsense Forex, we trade the daily time frame only because there are tremendous advantages to trading this way. Um, that was episode three of the podcast that I host. I'm going to link that one down below as well if you want to check that one out later. Um, and I do know that the big banks that I talked about in that video can react differently to intraday trading, like on the five minute chart and the 15 minute chart, than they will on a daily chart. Um, the intraday trading is not my forte. I'm not really talking about that. But a lot of what we are talking about will actually apply to both. Just understand that my playground is this daily time frame right here and how the banks normally manipulate that. So let's talk a bit more about that video because it really is going to apply to what we're talking about today. Now, a lot of people watched that video and got very excited or got very intrigued and their minds started going in all sorts of directions but not the one direction they likely should have gone. A lot of people thought to themselves well let's just trade let's just do what we can to trade like the big banks or let's do what we can to find out where sentiment is going and trade the opposite of that. These are two things that are almost impossible to do. The main objective of the Big Banks video was to say, hey, look, traders, the last thing you want to be in this market is popular. I think I use Zach Efron in that video too. Um, I hope five years down the line when people are watching this video that he's still relevant. He's the first person I thought of. Um, but I highlighted in that video exactly how the popular kids just get slaughtered over and over again. If you were on the side of the majority, the more popular side, chances are wildly against you that that trade is going to go your way because it is in the bank's best interest to take from the side with the most money on it. Now, what is the most popular technical analysis tool out there? Well, pretty much every chart I see from somebody else has some degree of support and resistance lines on it. So I can say with pretty... A pretty high level of confidence that support and resistance lines are the single most popular tool that technical traders use. Uh, now this is a problem because when everybody or almost everybody is using them it creates hot spots on a chart. If you have a particular support and resistance line that everybody can see you are probably going to get a lot of trading action at or near that line. You're going to get a lot of long, you're going to get a lot of short, you're going to get a lot of reversal, you're going to get a lot of breakthroughs, you're going to get a lot of people setting pending orders. And if you want to be really, really popular, do this on the more popular pairs, uh, your dollar pairs. There's going to be huge hot spots all over those charts and they're going to be mainly concentrated where these support and resistance lines are because that's where the majority of the traders are. That's where the popular kids are hanging out. And so if price ever does arrive at one of these lines, the banks have a decision to make now. They already know, before anything even happens, where the majority of the money is sitting for any currency pair, long or short. Um, if there is a change at one of these levels, the banks will react to it. They will ask themselves, is 
the trading action going on right now going to tilt the balance of the who's going long and who's going short one way or the other? If you have 60% of traders going long and 40% going short on the euro dollar, once it gets to that one support and resistance line that everybody can see and a lot of people are trading on, what is that going to do to that 60-40? If the, if the trading action going on right there is enough to flip that 60-40 the other way, for example, to where now 60% of traders are attempting to go short, well, the banks are obviously going to react to that and take price long which is going to create a reversal off of a support line. If the trading action that's going on at that line is not enough to tilt the balance or actually makes that 60-40 go longer, so now you have like a 65-35 or a 70-30, well, then it's going to break through that line and just keep right on going. And all the while, while this is going on, banks get to decide how much they want to manipulate price right at the line. So you can see complete breakthroughs, you can see complete reversals, or you can see fake outs one way or the other. Whatever is in their best interest to do, they're going to do it. Problem is, you don't know which one that's going to be. Now that's no different than anything else. Nobody knows exactly where price is going to go. But the one thing we do know is that at these lines, at these hot spots, the one thing that has a very, very good chance of happening is manipulation by the banks. Price manipulation that we cannot control. When it comes to my money, I don't like things I can't control. Investing in general already has some of those things that are inherent. I get that. But if I can, I want to eliminate as many things as possible that are completely out of my control. So I do my best to just flat out avoid these places. You know, if my personal system says go long and it just happens to be right near one of these lines, so be it. That's just the breaks. Uh, but more often than not, I'm going to avoid these areas. And that actually really works in my favor in the long run. Uh, if you guys out there want to have the big banks decide your fate, trade support and resistance lines. That's one way to almost guarantee this happening. But the main idea I wanted to get through to everybody in the big banks video and the main idea I want to get through to everybody in this portion right here is to stay unpopular. Avoid these hot spots. Take that lack of control out of your trading. Uh, but that's really hard to do because support and resistance lines are just loved throughout the Forex community. Uh, so what makes it worse is so many, because of what I just talked about, so many actual reversals will happen here more than they will on other tools. That doesn't mean they happen enough to actually matter. That just means that you're going to see them happen more often here than you are elsewhere. And who loves that shit more than anybody? Captain Hindsight. Forex Twitter loves this. Forex websites love this. Because then they can show it to you. Look where this reversal just happened. You know, two days ago, we had four different support and resistance lines on our screen. We didn't know which one it was going to hit. But now that we saw which one it actually did hit... We're going to show it to you and act like we knew it the whole time. Now, of course, they're not going to say this out loud, but that is the image they portray. And you don't know any better. You're like, wow, price did bounce off that line. Maybe I should really pay attention to these guys. And that's what they want. But support and resistance lines are great for this because they, they are very easy to see. They are very easy to show reversals. And reversals do happen more often here than they do anywhere else. And then on an even more sinister level, people out there who sell bad trading products also love to use support and resistance lines because price is typically going to either break through the line or bounce off of the line and you can sell both of those things to people and you can sell your product and collect money from these people for months until they figure out that this really isn't the way to go and then if you just are able to convince them that they're just not doing it right you might be able to hang on them for a couple more months and keep collecting money and then just lather rinse repeat this whole process and I know what I'm saying stings right now because I have gotten plenty of emails from people that have bought products just like this. If you want to sell a terrible, scammy product, use support and resistance lines. It's the easiest thing ever. Uh, but because, because no matter where you go, almost everywhere you look, people are showing examples of these lines working, and there's almost nobody out there to tell you otherwise, you get stuck on these things. There's nobody out there that can tell you different. You are going to ride or die with these things whether they actually end up working for you or not. And as we have already seen, for most people, they do not. 
And my aim is to make videos for the majority of traders out there, for the majority of up and coming traders out there, not for the tiny little minority of people that have found a tool like this and have figured out how to make it work. If any of you out there have done that, good. I am in your corner. I wish you nothing but success. You defied all odds and found a way to make this work. But the odds of most people doing what you just did are tremendously low. Now, there's plenty of reasons for this. A lot of it's money management, a lot of it's psychology, but we can't sit there and pretend like some of these tools and the way they put you in harm's way when it comes to the banks don't contribute to this somehow. Uh, but on that money management tip, let's keep going on this because this is something else you're going to see that really does drive me nuts. People use support and resistance lines for money management purposes, and I think it is incredibly short-sighted. Um, so sometimes breakthroughs do happen. Um, they probably happen more than reversals happen um, through these lines. And when they do happen, what you're going to see is people telling you to, hey, now that price has broken through this level, you don't need to do anything until we approach this next level. Have you guys ever seen this before? Because if you ever see it, just know that this is some really, really bad money management advice. I'll show you what I mean on my charts. Just uh, give me a second to find a good example here. Okay, didn't take long. Uh, we're here at the Euro dollar weekly chart. Now I know I don't trade the weekly chart. This is what's called an example. So if you look where price is right now, you're gonna see a pretty, I guess what people would say, strong support line right here, or really close to it where price just hasn't quite broken through. Now let's say that it does, and price starts coming down here a little bit. What you are going to find is there will be people out there that will say things like, well, the next support level isn't until all the way down here, which is, you know, how many pips is that? It's a lot. It's about 650 pips. Pretty exciting, right? I mean, all a price has to do is break through this line, and it is invariably going to go all the way to this line. Now, price might do that um, eventually. Who knows? But that is a really, really stupid way to manage a trade. Now, people might not say that directly to hang on to your trade until it gets to that next support level, but why would they even say it in the first place if they didn't think it had some significance to it? I mean, if price does break, so much can happen between here and here. So many things, and you could be passing up on so many pips just because you're waiting for it to get to a level that it may not get to it for a very long time. It may come back up. You have no idea, but if you had a really good money management system in place, you would already know what to do because you would be taking the same steps every time, no matter what the trade did. Um, but if you are using this as your money management strategy, man... <laughs> Got some bad news for you. I mean, every once in a while you're going to be right, but that could be the worst thing that ever happened because you're going to take this approach from this point on. And you have to understand why price moves the way it does. Price will get down here if and only if retail traders keep trying to go along the euro dollar for a very long time. You know, what are the chances of that? What are the chances of that happening anytime soon? What are the chances of some world event coming in and shifting the overall price of this thing altogether. So many things can happen between here and here. Um, I think a lot of you guys know to avoid this trap, but this is an absolute trap. Money management should be an intelligent, consistent system that you guys use all the time. I've already given you one, um, but this ain't it right here, just so you know. Uh, so I just want to mention that while we're here, because especially now that I've set it to you, you're going to be able to see it a little more often now that it's in your head. Uh, Forex websites in particular, uh, even more so Forex websites that belong to actual brokers. Like if you go to the Awanda technical analysis page or the Dukas copy technical analysis section, they love showing you where the support and resistance lines are in hopes that you choose to use them this way. Uh, forgetting that Oanda, for example, is a dealing desk broker. They make their money by taking the opposite side of your trade. So, of course, they want you to use these. But moving on, I already know the argument's coming, um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to squash it right now. There will be those of you out there who say, well, VP, I don't just use support and resistance lines to trade. 
I use a confluence of different tools, including support and resistance lines. So confluence is when multiple things flow into one thing. That's why I use this picture here. Um, <laughs> the only problem with this is, let's say you use support and resistance lines, and you pair it with um, Fibonacci or pivot points or something like that. All you've really done is make yourself even more popular. You've just made that hot spot even hotter by adding on other really popular tools. You have opened yourself up to even more bank manipulation. In trying to make your chances of winning better, you actually ended up making them worse. I know this can be a bitter pill to swallow, but understand where I'm coming from on this. The more you avoid these manipulation hotspots, the more you allow your actual technical analysis system to do what it is designed to do. Do not sit there and take extra measures to intentionally slam into these areas to where you have a lot less control. The game here is avoidance. And if you are using tools like this, you are playing the game the opposite of how it's supposed to be played by purposely trading in those areas where banks are certain to fuck with you. Traders, I really want to put the odds in your favor, and this is exactly how you don't do that. Now, the second part about why I don't advise people use support and resistance lines is like a lot of technical tools, especially ones in the Dirty Dozen video, there's a lot of guesswork involved. Maybe not as much as if you were to use Fibonacci or trend lines or something like that, um, but the fact still remains. You never really 100% know you know, is this, am I shooting for a breakout or a reversal? What is more likely to happen here? Um, there's more than one support and resistance line on my chart. You know, which is the one where the action is really going to take place? Am I, am I choosing the right one? Which time frame? Is this going to happen intraday or is this going to happen on a longer time frame? It's probably going to happen somewhere. And Forex Twitter is going to be right there to squawk about it. Uh, which one is it going to be? Because I need to know now. I don't need to know after the fact. And then once I do enter this trade, what do I do next? Uh, do I have a consistent plan of action in place? Um, if you're also using support and resistance lines to manage your trade, you really don't. Because that next line can be 20 pips away or it can be 1,000 pips away. And that is anything but consistent. And I know a lot of you newer traders out there that are using support and resistance lines are running into this problem. And all of this guesswork completely destroys your confidence. Yes, I'm putting it in blue. This is a mini trading psychology video. Um, all of my trading psychology videos have uh, blue on the title, on the font. And so this is something we're going to talk about because this is pretty big. Uh, so confidence really comes from two things. It comes from doing. You know, you have to actually have experience and trade often um, to really get to a point where you're confident in what you're doing. This, this applies to anything, not just trading. But um, So that's kind of the obvious one. But certainty is a really big one, too. I mean, it's huge. You know, I would say that your level of certainty on anything is directly related to how much confidence you're going to have about it. The more certainty you have, the more confidence you're going to have with it. Um, when I go back home and see my best friend, we always play tennis and we always play for money, and I always beat him. He beat me one time like 10 years ago, and that was enough to give him this false sense of confidence that he has any chance of beating me again and I just completely run over him all the time because I know what he's terrible at uh, and you know I've played him a bunch of times and so I know you know he's he's pretty athletic but I know what he sucks at I know what he's good at and I'm able to beat him every time based on this because I have a lot of certainty in a lot of different areas including the fact that I beat him almost every time so because of that I have a ton of confidence when I play him you know I use I'll talk trash I'll showboat, you know, I'll try things I normally don't try because I have tons of confidence going forward because I have a lot of certainty. Uh, now, if I were to play somebody I don't know for money, um, that's going to be a totally different story um, because now my confidence is way down because my certainty is way down. I mean, is this guy athletic? Um, where has he played before? You know, what's he good at? How hard can he hit? I don't know any of these things going in. And so even though I'm a confident guy, my confidence in this situation is going to be way less than it was before because my certainty is way down. They go hand in hand. 
And while in this you know, video right here, we can't do anything about your overall experience level, you just got to get to it and trade and make mistakes and learn and get better and better and better. But we can do something about this right here. And it starts with eliminating things that create uncertainty. And most price action tools out there do not allow much certainty at all. I mean, like I said, there is that small handful of you that have found one or two of them and over time mastered them in some way and started making money. Great. You are an outlier. For most traders, and there's a lot of smart people in that group, a lot of dumb people, a lot of smart people, but for most traders, these tools create nothing but constant uncertainty and that kills your confidence going forward and it allows you to not trade in a smart, consistent way. But you're told from the start that these are the only tools out there and these are the ones that work best, so those are the ones you use. And then you also see on trading forums and Reddit and places like that that trading with indicators is stupid and doesn't work, um, but forgetting the fact that most of these people have never used indicators or have only used a few really bad ones when there are literally thousands out there. And so if this is all you hear, of course you end up using these tools. Of course you end up with a ton of uncertainty. And up until this channel came along, you know, not even a year and a half ago, you never knew different. But we're here now. And at the end of the day, you can decide what's better or worse. But I can tell you this. When it comes to trading with any level of certainty, it's not even close. If you take the support and resistance lines that most people use and compare that to an indicator-based system that we use here at No Nonsense Forex, you know, we've already gone over a lot of the uncertainty and guesswork support and resistance lines will unavoidably give you. First off, are you using the right line? I have four support and resistance lines drawn on my chart right now. Which is the one where the reversal is going to happen? Which is the one where the breakthrough is going to happen? It's probably going to happen somewhere and Forex Twitter and all the websites are going to be there to tell me about it tomorrow, but I want to know right now which one's the right line. If I drop down a time frame, now I have more lines. You know, which time frame am I even supposed to be on here? Something is going to happen at one of these lines, but I have now six or seven of them drawn on my chart, and I don't know which one it's going to hit. And once it does break through or hit a reversal, how do I manage my trade? What do I do from here? And I get it. Some of you support and resistance lines traders have a plan of action when it comes to managing your trade, but many people don't. And this is guesswork that absolutely kills your confidence. And it's hard to trade when you don't have any confidence behind what you're actually doing. How do you expect to succeed? How do you expect to succeed at anything if you don't have any confidence behind it? To where, with an indicator-based system, especially the one we use here, I know exactly where to trade every time. I know whether to go long or go short or do nothing because my system tells me. And then the money management is already built in. I handle every trade on a percentage basis and I handle every trade the exact same way once I am already in it. There is no guesswork here. I have also tested this system five years back and one year forward and it worked really well every time. So no matter what happens, I can confidently move forward and just keep trading this way. If I take a string of losses, well, I took string of losses with this system in the past. Those things happen. I know that long term, in the end, I am going to come out ahead. And to me, this is far superior to this constant state of second guessing and wonder if I use the right tool at the right time with the right direction. And then I have to go in and keep drawing new ones and erase old ones. I mean, traders, all things considered, if you had to completely start over again, which one would you rather have? For those of you who are not familiar with this channel, this is what we build here. It doesn't take that long, and people have seen results right away. And they all say the same thing. They say, I'm never going back to this ever again. So just remember this. Um, for brand new traders and people who already trade our system, this is kind of two different pieces of advice here. For the brand new traders, just know the support and resistance lines are not all they're made out to be. There are two sides of the coin here and nobody ever shows you the other side of the coin. So just be aware of what that is. And also note the fact that nobody says anything bad about support and resistance lines. Almost nobody out there that I've seen. Um, almost all of the information out there is super positive and shows you how they work. And when you hear that, 
especially in the investment and trading world, I mean, alarm bells should be going off in your head immediately. And then coupled with the fact that most traders, almost every trader out there never gets to where they want to be in Forex and most of them lose money, should really be tripping alarm bells off in your head. And it probably did at one point, but then you go out there and look for more information and all of the information out there is very positive towards these tools. You know, what else are you going to think? You know, I don't blame you for going against your gut on this one, uh, but your gut was right. It doesn't add up at all. And so for people who follow the no-nonsense Forex way of trading, the main takeaway I want you to get out of this video is just when you see them, because you're going to, you know, you're going to run into times where you're trading right into a support and resistance line. And even though you've kind of conditioned yourself not to see them anymore, you're still going to see them. Don't let it affect you one way or another. It's just circumstance. Just keep right on doing what you're doing because what you are doing has been proven to work. And for all of you support and resistance diehards out there, let me extend an olive branch to you. I mean, some of this is going to be kind of repeating what I'd said before, but still. Try this. Just go with me on this. If you love support and resistance lines and you're really having success with them, just keep doing that. I mean, why deviate from what works? If it actually works, if you're getting great yearly returns all the time and these lines are part of the reason why, far be it from me to take you off of that. Remember, this video is not geared towards you. You are an anomaly. You are an outlier. You have found ways to make something like this work that does not work for most traders. And this video is made for most traders. So if, if you're rocking these and it's working and you're making money, keep on doing it. But you can always try improving. You know, there's other ways to do things and you might as well optimize the best system you can possibly put together because you're going to have this the next 10, 20 years. Why not go with the best one? Maybe there's other ways. I mean, is it possible that there are better ways to trade Forex than what you're doing right now? Do you have the time to test it out? You know, start another demo account and try maybe trading our way. And so you can at least say, okay, look, I tried my way. I tried your way. Now I can actually say without sounding like a buffoon because I've actually tried my way and your way that my way works better. Compare the two. Contrast the two. But the only way you can really do that is if you try both ways out. And I will have so much more respect for people like you than I do people who come into my channel and say things like, well, indicators are stupid. They don't work. Or, you know, millionaire traders use support and resistance lines. So how are you going to sit there and say they don't work? Well, because they don't work for most people. Uh, but you owe it to yourself to try both and see which one works the best because then you'll have it forever. And one of them might be far better than the other one. And you'll never know unless you do it. But if you really love price action and you just can't see trading any other way, uh, that's fine. That's totally your call. But what I would also suggest maybe you do is check out my money management playlist. I've had a lot of people come in and say, you know, I really disagree with VP's whole indicator thing. I'm a pure price action trader, but I did like the money management playlist. That did actually help me. Uh, and maybe it can help you too. Uh, I'll go ahead and link that down below in the description as well. Uh, but if you are out there and you are a new trader that's looking for a system that takes the guesswork out of things, which trust me, you're going to learn this right away. Taking the guesswork out of things is phenomenal. Or you're just intrigued and you want to see what we do here. Subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell. Don't miss anything. I will also link the beginner's video down below. Whether you're a beginning trader or you're not, we do things different here. And that video will kind of guide you through to make the whole process a lot easier. There is a completely different I would say much easier and much more effective way to trade Forex. And this channel is where you find it. And I will guide you through every single step. A trader that knows how to avoid situations they have no control over and a trader that can trade with full confidence and never has to sit there and wonder if they are doing it right or if they use the right tool at the right time. Those traders have a much higher chance of making in this game. The fail rate in Forex trading is super high and you need to do everything you possibly can to up your odds if you have any chance of making it in this game. And this is the one channel that fully understands that. Get on board. Let's take this ride. Go get it.